Okay, so I have this lovely Google Doc here, and I would like to just set this to a random color, since I can't decide on what color we want to give this. So, I'm just gonna go ahead, and let's just go take some code from our other tutorial, and we're gonna add some code to it so that we can give this, but we select a random color. So I'm gonna go to my drive, I'll just make a little copy of this add-on that we created the other day with our stuff here, and our code here. I'm just gonna make a little copy of this, and Let's give our project a meaningful name. We want to make it a color changer, right? And there we go. Okay, so um, I'm going to go to my in my index file. I'm just going to edit edit it just a bit because I don't like how it appears. Some dark mode. Bam, there we go. And then you generate our color. And then our button needs to have ID. And this is gonna be our color button. And then we also want, you know, a place to just output our color, you know? So I'll just set um um uh, the ID called color output. Place where you can see which color we have generated. Um so what code do I want to, to go here? Well, I want to basically take text that we select, and I want to take that text, and I want to apply a color to it. There's some code here that I found in the, um, the reference, and you want to use the reference a lot, and this bolds the selected text. So I'm just going to copy this, and it's okay to copy as long as you change any credit. So, I'm just gonna go color select text is a better name. Giving functions main so you know what your functions are. Now. Okay, anyway, we have our all our code here. I'm just gonna break down this for you. So basically what this does is this basically gets the selected text. So if I go over here and I select this, it's going to get that selected text. However, there's a problem. When there is an image in the middle of your selected text, we can't just get that text or just split it into elements. And so that's where we're getting our range elements. So that if there is a non-text element in our selection, we can just ignore it. So now this goes through our elements one by one. And basically, this is what it does. We can ignore our not images and other non-text elements, like this element that's going to be in our array, but we're just going to ignore it because it's not a text file, because we can't work with that. We can't just color that. Um, and then, once that's finally done, basically bold the selected text. And if the text is partial, like if it's part of an element, so like if it, you know, cuts off, we need to make sure that we know where it ends and where it starts, instead of coloring the entire thing. You know what I mean? So that's why this is a this is partial. And then we set our text bold from elements get start offset and elements get end offset inclusive. And then set that true. So now that we know what all of this is, we can start and we can modify the code. So what I'm gonna do, actually, let me make sure before I even do anything, I need to make sure I credit my sources. So I'm just gonna go. So that not only future um, developers looking at my code can look at, but they can also go, I can go to the source in the future and learn from it just in case I forget this code and what this code does. Um, so now we have that, this here. Now we need to be, instead of set full, we wanna set our color. So let's go to the documentation, sending Google Docs. You can see that there is text. And we click on this class called text. And we can find a function called set color. Set background color and set foreground color. We don't want to highlight, we want to set our foreground color. So let's click that. 
and we can see that this function is here. So we can either use this function, which is a, which is an override of this function. So this is going to be if we want to select partially, and this will be if we want to select the entire thing. So I'll just add this function here, and see that. Bam. I need to make sure I add that there. I'm gonna go and just set our foreground color. Just change, just change the function here. So now this will set our foreground color of our star offset and our end offset. So that way we can only set the part of it if it's partial. And then we color the entire thing if it's the entire thing selected. I would say that that is it for this one. Now what we can do is we can go to our color button and we can just um, make a script past here. And in that script we can make some buttons. So let's initialize our buttons. So we need to initialize our buttons. So our color button is going to be equal to get elements. Um, actually, document. We are using the DOM. Get elements by ID. Um, and in here, we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to put in color button. And then we also want to make have our color output, which is our paragraph, which is going to contain, you know, a color output. So you can just copy the color. And that will just output there. So now that we have defined our buttons, we need to create a function. We can set this color to just for now. We'll have a randomized color generator later, but for now we'll leave it as that. Then for color output, we want to go ahead and make our color output get the text content of that and set that text content to our color. So that way, the, our, the color that we have generated is gonna, is gonna be able to be seen here. And so the users can see what the color is and they can just copy from the add-on. Basically, we want to run code from here. So in order to run a code from Google script, we have to use, and this is a, a lot, this is a handful, Google script run with success handler and then our function so color selected text is our function that we're going to run so we're just going to run that and that will get our color here and now once we call have our function to be called we need to add an event listener so color button add events listener i think it's click and then on call and this event listener will make sure that that um, the event is received. And actually, let me just because we don't know because we don't know because it's black. Salt is set to blue, so that changes our color from black to blue. Again, we'll have a randomized color generator first. We need to make sure that this part of the code is working before we continue. The plot. I can go and run this function. I can test this function with. Um, latest code, select a document, I'll select this one that we want to edit, save it, and run it. When you go to color changer start, it's going to ask us to authorize a script, and yes, all the code in the script is safe, so don't worry. Because we made it ourselves, so you know it's safe. Okay, um, yeah, black. Dark mode, yeah. <laughs> anyway, we go click here and generate a color. Oh no, it's the error. There's an error going on. Okay, so I kind of screwed up. So I made an error. Um. Okay, so I made an error. Just go here. Um. Apparently, yeah, it's this. It's not capital, it's lowercase. So now that we fixed our error, 
I will go. And we can just rerun our test tags on this latest code installed for current user. And this is actually really important. The latest um, tests that you created are going to be at the bottom, not the top. So run this one. And then we'll go in our add-on, start it, and there we go. Our color was generated. Yeah, there we go, blue. Yeah, it's blue, there we go. Now that we know that the code is working properly, we're gonna go and we're gonna make some scripts so that way we can generate a random color. So I'll put these stuff off into the distance for now, and I'll just create some a script. And so we need um, a function called generate random color. Google Docs basically sees colors as hex, but the issue is random. We have to convert our our um, number that we generate from math random to base 16. Okay, so now that we have our function here, okay, so now that we have our function here, I'm gonna create a variable called color, and we're gonna start with a, with a hash, because the hash is what's basically in the start of our color, and I'll do a for loop for um, i is equal to zero, you know your standard for loop, you know the super coding. Uh, our hex value is gonna be a length of six, because we wanna generate six random numbers for our color, because, you know, one, two, three, five, six. Um, and then I plus plus because we want to go forward. And now that we have that, now we need to generate, we need to generate a color that we want to add here. So I'll just do a var um, base 10 number. And this variable is going to be generated based on, um, based on, and this is important, Well, I'll edit that. There we go. Finally. Um, so it looks like we're wanting to use math random and friends number between zero and one. And so to get zero to nine, we would use math random ten. Math floor, math random, and then since this is base sixteen that we're converting to, we want to use fifteen. So now the issue is now we need a base 16 number to convert so that will get us a string. So we'll just begin with the function here. And this is function base 10 to 16 with a number that's generated. And there's probably a more efficient way to do this, but I'm just going to use this switch and I'll just do all my multiple cases. I already have the code, so I'm just gonna copy and paste the code in here because I already made it. Um, so now we have the code. We can use base 16. We can just say base 10 to to 16, and put in base our number that we created. So now that we have this number, we want to add this string to our color so that we have our next thing. So I'll just go color plus equals base 16 number that we generated. So we add that to our string. And now what we can do is instead of using this color that we have here, we can see generate random color. Oh, there we go. Oh, we need to return our function because we did not return a color to use. And now we can run it. We can run our code, select our documents, save it and then the latest test that we created is always at the bottom add-ons color changer start here we go we have generated a color we can copy and paste it we can create a new color and we can just yeah i'll just find a good one um this one looks good but i'll probably find a better one Mm, too bad. This looks like a really good color. Okay. That's good. So now we created 
we learned how to select text and partition it, as well as apply attributes to that text. And we also used um, basic HTML, HTML interactive things such as buttons and getting elements out by ID and also editing text. This is the end of this Google Apps Script series, finally. You can find the code in the description and I hope you learned something. Bye.